Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Karen Boniker and I'd like to introduce you to this new brush pack called Inking. And one of the things you're going to notice about most of these brushes is that they are digital watercolor. So it means that you can actually work on multiple layers when you're working in Painter or Painter Essentials. And this makes it really nice uh, to be able to get very creative with these brushes. I'm going to also point out that this, these brushes are very susceptible to paper texture, so that means that they'll pick up paper texture very, very well in your, in your brushwork. Now, in this basic sketch here, I'm going to go through some of the brushes that I use to create this and to give you a chance to understand some of the ways that you can use them. The very first brush is called Blotch. And up in the corner here, I'm going to go ahead and drop this layer here and add a new layer. I'm going to do just a quick brush stroke here so you can kind of see what this brush looks like. And there's a couple of ways that I like working with this particular one. I especially like it for creating the look of trees. So if I'm looking for some extra texture or maybe some trees in the distant background here, this would be a good brush to use. It's also quite nice for creating the look of pine needles. So if you were maybe looking to add, you know, to create the look of pine trees, this would be another brush that you could use. Um, see with this, these quick little brush, brush strokes, I could then take more of a detailed brush and go in and create the effect of, of some trees or pines maybe cypress trees and that type of thing. It's also quite nice for just adding extra texture where you might want it. So if you're looking to maybe uh, create some nice mountains and you want some extra visual texture within the piece, then this would be another good brush to use. The next brush is called Fine Tip and it pretty much uh, explains itself. I want to have you note that the wet fringe is set to 16% on this brush, so that's the amount of, of water and paint available for the diffusion of the brush. The diffusion setting, however, is set to zero, so it's not going to diffuse at a very high rate, so the edges on this particular brush are going to, going to be a little bit harder edged. So when I select, for example, a black, a black color to paint with, you can see that um, I get these nice uh, crisp lines and that might be exactly what you're looking for in an illustration or if you're doing sumie type of painting or Japanese ink painting. And I can use it very nicely to enhance detail in certain areas as well. It's also a nice brush for creating the look of trees or tree trunks very, uh, very expressive for limbs. So lots of different ways that you could utilize this brush. The next brush we're going to take a look at is called Flat Pen. And this one is a flat tipped pen and also really nice for using for sketching, uh, for calligraphy. And I used it mostly to uh, use to enhance different angles and shadows within this painting. So it's a really a nice one for that. The next one is Imprint, and this one is a real a brush that really has a lot of diffusion. Not so much of a wet fringe on the edge, but it does have a lot of diffusion, and you'll notice that it does pick up texture. So what would that be good for? Well, it would certainly be a nice brush to enhance the texture on the mountainside. If I was looking to bring in a little more texture here, I could certainly use it that way. Um, it's a nice brush for filled in, filling in or creating the look of trees. Or foliage. If there were certain parts of the painting that I wanted to develop a little further and you know maybe more trees. It has a very soft and fluid edge. And that brush is Imprint. This one is Ink Diffuse 
And the way that I typically will use this brush is, for example, I will take the fine tip and maybe I uh, use a nice black color and I go along the edge here and maybe we'll do it in a couple of areas here and then I want to create a diffusion of that particular brush stroke so I would go to the ink diffuse now and please note that you, if you want to increase the wet fringe or the diffusion even further, you can work with the diffusion and the wet fringe option. I have this brush set to 20 on the diffusion and the wet fringe is 92 and that is the default settings on this brush. So with that same color as I go back over that brush stroke, you can see how it softly diffuses that edge. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I want a really nice soft edge. Remember also that you know it depends upon how much diffusion you're looking for. Uh, so get in the habit of working with those diffusion settings within the media panel here to help you get the exact look you're looking for in that brush, whether it's wetter or drier. and that's Ink Diffuse. The next brush is Ink Wash and again this is a beautiful soft brush highly um, use it with lots of texture lots of grain within your paper panels and you can see how I'm working with it here by just enhancing some of the texture in certain parts of the painting. I use my Alt key quite a bit to sample the existing colors on the layer and so that way I can uh, easily blend this and merge these colors in really nicely. With a flat paper, it's also a very nice uh, brush. And we'll just go to flat and then we'll pick up a nice blue color for just creating a soft gradient within the sky. So it just blends out just beautifully. And that's Ink Wash. The next brush is Ink Like. And this one um, is a real fun brush and I'm going to show you a little different approach with this one. And Control D and I'm going to bring up a new image here and I'm going to show you um, how I would utilize this, this brush. Ink Like, is a, it really flares out. It's a beautiful brush to use and it's a wonderful brush for, for creating the look of pine, uh, pine needles. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put in some of these, create something kind of on the fly here. And then I would take um, perhaps the, we'll go ahead and go to this beautiful brush called Noton. And I'll bring the size of this brush up a little bit. And I'll use it with a nice gritty paper to create the limbs of the pine tree and the small branches that go off And again, this is one of my, absolutely one of my favorite brushes within this category, the Noton brush. So it's very, very, very nice for creating the look of pine needles. Okay, um, the next brush is called Inky Reads, and this one is another one that um, is, is kind of um, another brush that's good for creating foliage 
texture, or again, for creating the look of pine needles, okay, or cypress trees. So it would be another good one for that use. And that's called the Inky Reeds. This one is murky. And again, this brush, um, what I've been using this one for is to create the look of additional foliage so and trees. So it's really nice uh, for illustrators for the look of trees, foliage, big oak trees, that type of thing. And that brush is called Murky. The next brush we're going to look at is Noton, and I uh, just talked to you about this again. Just a beautiful, highly expressive brush. Uh, wonderful for line work, beautiful for creating additional texture, enhancing line in places where you may have lost some of your line work. A beautiful illustration brush. Uh, really nice for creating birds. And one of my favorites. The next brush is Score, and this one, um, we'll make sure it's set to default. This one is just a, a really nice, um, expressive brush, good for beginning line work. I used it pretty extensively here in the beginning of this painting to create the mountains, and then I used a lot of the, uh, the ink wash brushes uh, to create the, the mountains and also the ink diffuse. So this would be, you know, a wonderful way of getting started to create those nice mountains. For your fine tips, again, you'd want to use the Noton pen to give a, a harder edge to those mountains along with the, with the soft edges of the ink wash and the ink diffuse. Scratchy is a, a really wonderful texture brush. So for me, I used it just to create additional little bits of texture in these mountains. And you can see where I did that here and there. Um, I didn't go overboard with it because I think it's, for this particular painting, um, it didn't need a lot. So I just kind of kept it really uh, soft and didn't uh, do a lot of textural work with that particular brush, but it's very expressive. Love the effects that it creates. Very random. So if you're an illustrator and you really like to work randomly with a very expressive kind of approach, this is a good one to uh, work with. That is Scratchy. And no set of inking brushes would be complete without a splatter brush. And this one is uh, also has a diffusion setting and a wet fringe so you can make it as wet or as dry as you want. Beautiful for creating a very soft pressure or hard pressure and you'll get a you know quite a fly out. So if I use just medium pressure here you know I'm just creating kind of a little bit of effect of texture throughout there but if I put firm pressure I'm going to get a really beautiful fly out of ink and for those of you interested in creating textures, uh, this would be a beautiful brush to, to work with in terms of creating just a, a flat canvas full of inking type texture. And that's Splatter. This one, the next one is called Spotty. This again is um, just kind of a texture brush. Uh, good for adding texture where you might need a little extra something. Uh, it also can be used for creating the look of random uh, foliage. So if you're wanting something very soft and expressive, it's a beautiful brush for creating that effect. And the last brush we're looking at here is called Zen. And this one is, again, one of my favorite brushes. Beautiful brush for creating leaves such as the bamboo leaf. And I'll do a few little brush strokes here for you so you can see this. And it's kind of an up motion and then down, up, and then pressure, up, pressure, up, 
and pressure to create that look of bamboo. Let me do one more for you here as an example. Um, let's just go ahead and do a couple of strokes. And we'll go the opposite direction. So you can see that you can create nice bamboo type leaves with this brush as well. I did a nice little trunk here, came out from the side. And you've got these nice leaf effects that you can create. Takes a little practice, but you'll get there. Just keep working at it. Okay, and that would be the last brush, which is Zen. So I hope you enjoy uh, these beautiful brushes. I think, you know, for me, they've been wonderful to work with. I do enjoy this type of uh, work with inking and uh, watercolor brushes. So this particular uh, brush pack really has a lot of versatility, not only for sumier type painting, but also for illustrators. So wonderful brush pack, enjoy, and thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.